everybody. Sandra Adelaja here. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Bright Shibose. Bola Luro. Popo Lao Luato Sin. Obi Ojimadu. Marianne Habaha. Adelika Adeniyi. Welcome everyone. Anthony Finch. Uh, Ade Tobinson. Adeola Disu. Mary Oben. Femiola Phillips. Shanka. Mufelola Olagbegi. Araromi. Cyril Isaac Eluma. Daniel Atsenga. Joseph Kwana. Willie Fraser. Anne Marie. Arugunda De Femi. Nkiro Jimadu. Stella Nuku. Victoria Salau, Justin Mayo, Tunde Steve, Nalona Debayo, James Ogwe, Okay, guys, here we are. Ah, Pastor Cole, hi, good morning. No, 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 that's not Pastor Cole, that's Ong and Lehun from from uh, Vietnam. Welcome, Vietnam. It's, we don't have Vietnam people too many times here. So it's nice to see Vietnam here today. Well, uh, today's topic, we are continuing to talk on this series. And this series topic is um, on crisis. We are talking on crisis this week. And uh, so what's the t today's topic? Today's topic is why does God allow adversities, troubles, and crises in our lives? Why does God allow adversities, troubles, and crises in our lives? But before we do that, I would like you to go and uh, you know copy the, the this this uh, to share the link, share this link to your because that's the only way you could get a copy. For you to get a copy of this message, you've got to share the link. For you to get a copy of this message, you've got to share the link. So I want to encourage you right now to go share the link to this message. Go, you know, if you look under your video, you will see a video share, a video sign that says share. So I want to encourage you, go share that link. Once you share the link, then we'll be ready to go. Please go share the link uh, to this program because you want to have a copy of it. Once you share the link, you'll get a copy of it. You'll get a copy of it. By the way, uh, you see the link to my book there. My book, I have it now. It's, it's arrived in my hand as well. Only God can save Nigeria. Like I said, it's not only for Nigeria, and it's not just about Nigeria, but it's about any country. You could put your own country there. Only God can save, you know, whatever country you're coming from. And, you know, the book will really open your eyes to know what you can do to help brings about salvation of your country. This is the book here. So if you don't have your copy, go to Amazon.com or Okada, Okada Books and uh, you'll be able to get your own copy there. Only God can save Nigeria. This book will transform and revolutionize your life. People have been saying it's the greatest book they've ever read. Those who also have read it already. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> what a topic, huh? What a topic we have today. Why does God allow adversities, troubles, and crises in our lives? Why does God allow adversities, troubles, and crises in our lives? 
Uh, okay, here we go. First of all, we have to admit that crises, adversities, and challenges are a norm in the world we live in. There is just no way to live in this world without having some amount of challenges or crises or troubles. You know, that is just the way our world is modeled. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they are lying to you. If anybody tells you that there is a way you can live this life here without challenges and without uh, troubles, you know, it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. So, uh, you know, actually, even the Bible says that we must through a lot of struggles and fight, uh, you know, inherit the kingdom of God. Even for us to inherit the kingdom of God, we must through a lot of pain, endurance, perseverance, fighting to so inherit the kingdom of God. Even the kingdom of God cannot get there. Yeah, the kingdom of God will be trouble-free and tear-free and all that, but while on the way there, we are going to pay our own dues. We are going to pay our own dues, or we are going to, you know, we are going to pay our own price. Price of uh, struggles, price of suffering and challenges, crises, adversities, problems. And every one of us will go through that one way or the other, one way or the other. So, um, so why does God allow it? Why does God allow it? Well, first of all, God doesn't have to allow it. The fact that we are living in the flesh, yeah, that means that, uh, you know, the flesh does what the flesh does. Um, I'm not going to go into the history and the story of the fall of Adam and Eve, but man has fallen, and as a result of the fall, man, men do bad things to each other. And more than that, men even do bad things to themselves. And sometimes we don't even know that we are inflicting something bad, evil, negative on ourselves. We will do things unknowingly sometimes, but sometimes we are the cause of our own troubles. Sometimes we are the cause of our own adversities. We are the cause of our own problems. And, uh, and most of the time, most of the time, all, almost all the problems that I and you have is as a result of the people that we have allowed in our lives. Uh, you know, one of the greatest sources of problems that, that brings much more pain than any other thing in our lives are the people that we have decided to trust, are the people that we have decided to trust. So, um, you, know, you know, if you look in the life of most people in the world, you will discover that they, their suffering is either connected to uh, their husbands or to their wives or to their children or to their parents or to their relatives or to somebody that is connected to them. You see, so, you know, to blame God for most of our problems is really, is really uh, not right. To blame God for most of our problems is not accurately right. And most of the troubles and the challenges that we are encountering, that we encounter in our lives, doesn't have anything to do with God at all. Doesn't have anything to do with God at all. God is neutral in a lot of these situations. Uh, but, uh, you know, but we are the author of our own troubles. And we are often the ones that are, you know, to blame for, for most, of our, most of our pains and most of our, you know, sorrows in life. And then there's, there are other reasons why, we, why, we are, why we're in pain, why we experience adversities and crises and uh, troubles and problems. And that is, you know, is often because we refuse to grow. Uh, most of the time when we refuse to grow, and when we refuse to mature, to grow into maturity, we suffer. We suffer. And, um, yeah, and that is, uh, that is, you know, just because life is dynamic and life demands growth. Life demands growth and life demands uh, change, constant change. And so when you don't want to change, uh, the laws of life itself, the laws of life themselves will force you to grow. The laws of life will force you to change. And for you to be forced to change means pain. For you to be forced to change means uh, sorrow, pain, trouble, uh, calamities, crisis. And some of the, some, sometimes those are the only things that could get us to, to change and to, you know, to adjust our ways. Uh, so another reason why a lot of us run into trouble is because we love ourselves. Egocentrism and love of self 
is one of the greatest destroyer of, destroyers of man. We mostly destroy ourselves when we are concentrated on ourselves. You see, you know, we think that uh, the more I love myself, the better my life becomes. But in the real sense, uh, you know, life is not about yourself. And life is not supposed to circulate and revolve and rotate around you and just you, me, my, I mean, I, me, and mine. I, me, and mine. It's not supposed to just be about you, you, and you. Uh, life is supposed to be about love, loving other people, loving God. Uh, life is supposed to be about service, serving others, serving God. But when you abandon service, when you abandon love, and you begin to just love yourself, um, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, let me give you a very rude example here. It's like you love eating, you love yourself so much, and you love to eat all the time, you know, before I get to eating. It's like you love yourself so much, and you just need, like to receive, you don't like to give, you know. But the way life is been uh, programmed and arranged is that you both receive and give. So if you look around you, you see the way uh, we are functioning with nature. And the way man has been made to function with nature is that we breathe in oxygen. And oxygen is, um, oxygen is what the animals produce. The animal, I mean, the, the plants, sorry, the plants and, and the plants and all that, they, uh, they, no, the plants produce oxygen that we need to survive. And then we produce, is it carbohydrate, 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 carbohydrates, uh, carb carbohydrates that, or whatever, yeah, I think it's carbohydrate. We produce carbohydrate that, you know, that's like 30, 50 years ago, <laughs> 40 years ago, I studied that. We produce carbohydrate that the, the animals, I mean, the, the plants need. So it's a, it's a, it's a mutual dependency kind of life. So we give, they give. We give, we receive, they receive. So carbon, carbon, carbon dioxide. Carbon, is in carbon dioxide? Yeah, carbon dioxide. So we produce the carbon dioxide that they need. And they produce the oxygen that we need. So we receive from them, then give to them. And we uh, give to them, they receive from us. So that's how life is supposed to be. Life is get, take and give, take and give, give and take, give and take. But it's actually, actually not, not uh, uh, take and give. But uh, it's actually uh, give and take, give and take, give and take. But because uh, of our, uh, because of our, what egocentrism? Because of our ego, egocentrism, uh, we, you know, we don't want to live a. Uh, you know, a reciprocal relationship. We don't want to live a symbiotic kind of relationship. We don't want. Uh, we don't want to be. We just want to live for ourselves, and that is what egocentrism that does. That's what selfishness does. We just want to receive. So, can you imagine if let's take let's just take the example of, um, you know, of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Uh, some people say it's carbon dioxide. Some people say it's monoxide. But anyway, anyhow, uh, so let's say uh, what I was taught in high school is carbon dioxide, oxygen and carbon dioxide. So let's just take the oxygen and carbon dioxide situation. So we all need uh, each other. We, it's a symbiotic, symbiotic kind of relationship. So because of this symbiotic relationship, that's how life is supposed to function. Everything works better when we are... Uh, in live, when we live in the, in emotionally dependent you know uh, world, when we live in emotionally dependent world, but imagine, imagine that man says, "I love oxygen so much, I will only be breathing in oxygen. I will only be bringing breathing in oxygen. I will, I don't want to give out carbon dioxide. I only need oxygen. No need for carbon dioxide. I only want to bring in uh, oxygen. I don't, I don't want to give anybody my carbon dioxide." Can you imagine if anybody says, don't give in uh, your carbon dioxide? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to breathe out carbon dioxide. I'm, not, I'm only going to breathe in uh, oxygen. Tell me what happens to that kind of person. A person that refuses sy sy uh, symbiotic relationship with nature will die. 
It will, it will not last a, an hour. It, it will not last a day for sure. It will not last a day. <laughs> Uh, so you will not last a day. You will not last a day. So if you, so just imagine that kind of situation that you said, I'm so selfish. I love myself so much. I only want to receive. I don't want to, I don't want to give. Then you have, uh, you have respiratory catastrophe. You have respiratory breakdown that will lead to your death. You are going to, you are just going to die very fast. So that is how life is made to be. We are all supposed to be interdependent and we are supposed to give you know, give life past constantly. So you actually live only when you give life. Your life is about giving. If you are not giving, you are not living. Now, to, you know, use that example of, you know, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Just use that as an example of how much we need to live a life of giving. And when we give, then we will receive. But then when anybody says, no, I'm only going to be breathing. I'm only breathing in. I don't want to breathe out. I don't like to give. I just want to breathe in. <laughs> uh, then the person is in trouble. Then the person is in trouble. So, so uh, that's how things are in, in life. So, can you now imagine yourself? Who uh, I don't know what you do, but you love to receive more. And anybody that doesn't want troubles, anybody that doesn't want challenges, anybody that doesn't appreciate crisis, anyone that does not appreciate. Uh, you know, adversary and problems in life, you, it's like you want to just receive. It's like you just want to become like that person that just wants to uh, breathe in oxygen and doesn't want to give out uh, carbon dioxide. You know, it's just like you just want to receive from life. So if you, if you don't want to, you know, have ch challenges and problems, you know, your life will fall apart. So can you imagine when pastors and other people are beginning to teach people that, you know, you would never have problems, that we are here, we have the anointing, we have the power, we are going to pray for you, God is going to insulate you from problems, and you are going to be protected from problems, and you are going to have everything you want, you are going to have breakthrough, you are going to have everything, and the anointing is here, the man of God is here, he's going to pray for you, all your problems are going to be resolved. And all your challenges will disappear, and uh, and you know you you know you don't you will not have problem again, and you will never have problems since you believe in Jesus Christ. That's like you, I just want to receive the good things of life. I just want to be receiving good things. I just want to appreciate good things. I just want to receive good things of life. I don't want to ever give out anything, and you know, and you know, then you will never change, and things will just. Your life will be run down. You so that is one of the reasons why we have problems, crises, and adversities, because of our selfishness, because of our egocentrism. When you love yourself so much that you don't want to give life, when you love yourself so much that you don't want to sacrifice that other people might have life, when you love yourself so much that you just want to receive the good things of life, you just want to receive blessings from life, you just want to receive you know good news, you just want to receive. You know, the things going on your own way, then you, you will never go far. Your life will begin to break down because life is about sacrificing so that other people might have something. Life is about, you know, you know giving of your energy, giving of your talent, giving away your, your capacity, giving away your, 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 your abilities, giving away your skills, giving away, you know, your knowledge, giving away your wisdom, you know, giving away everything that God has blessed you with. Once you begin to give away, then you begin to receive a lot as, as well back. But when you don't want to give out and you just want to be receiving, when your focus is on just receiving and getting, 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 it's like you just want to breathe in oxygen and you don't want to breathe out carbon dioxide. And if you don't breathe out, you are, you are dead. You are as good as dead. And that's how life is. So if you are the type that just want to receive in life and you don't want to be giving out uh, in, your, in life, then your life is as good as broken down. Your life will just be shattered. Your life will be full of mess. Your life will just be full of perpetual problems. So, so what I'm, the point I'm trying to make, meanwhile, is that uh, a lot of, you know, my problem, my question, my title today is why does God allow troubles and problems and uh, challenges and all that in our lives? Well, the thing is that sometimes it doesn't even have to be God. God, is, God doesn't have anything to do with a lot of things that we are bothering God with. And God is not God's call. A lot of this, it's a lot of the problems, maybe 70% of our problems are, are, are from us. 
uh, 17 percent of our issues are our own call we are the ones who are the cause of our problems but you know still i would still like to address the question why is it why is it that god allow crises troubles sorrows and uh, you know adversities in our lives why does god allow these things well because there is still a fact is that is still a fact that God does allow these things. God does allow these things. So if God allows them, what is the reason behind it? Why is God allowing difficulties and problems to come into the lives of people? Okay, number one. Number one. You know, you, do you know that without, without challenges, without resistance, and without overcoming obstacles a child that is born will never grow you know a child could be eating but if there are no challenges for that child <clears throat> if that child doesn't have to reach out to go and get the breast reach out to crawl reach out to, to to sit down reach out to make movement if a if a child, a baby that is born, does not do exercise, does not, there are no pressures that are applied to him. If there are no demand for that child to move, to to grow, to you know, to stretch, to reach out, to you know, if there are no opposition, if there are no resistance, if there are no need to you know pull and reach out and do that, you know, that child will remain uh, will remain like that, and that child will never walk. And that child will never grow muscles. That child will never... <laughs> Sorry. S someone is writing here. Miranda Nguwafu. I'm listening to your message. How to bring something from nothing. Pastor, let me confess. I am rising from the valley to the mountain top. Thanks to that message. Yeah, by the way, a lot of you guys who are just joining us. And you have missed a lot of my messages. You know what? I would like to advise you uh, to, you know, to make it a life policy if you want, and to make it uh, a personal challenge to go and listen to my old messages. Go and listen to my old messages. Go and listen to my old messages. Those messages will help you greatly. They will help you greatly. Uh, by the way, uh, let me ask you a question. I want to ask all of you a question. Uh, did you people notice that we have upgraded the way? We set up the the messages on YouTube and on the blog, the, you know, on the blog. Have you noticed how we set it up? Is it very helpful? Is it a little bit better now? Did anybody go to the blog these days, to the video blog, to see my video uh, recordings? And did you see the way the the messages are set up and arranged, or uh, on YouTube? Uh, have you have you have you noticed that? Does that, did anybody notice? I just want to hear your remark maybe uh maybe you people saw it or you didn't see it if you have not yet seen it please go to our uh sundayadelajablog.com sundayadelajablog.com and go to the video blog you will see the way uh the messages have been rearranged so that you know it has the list and the names of every message so that it's much more easier for you uh to listen to uh if you have been there let me hear your opinion about that let me hear what you think. Do you think it's helpful? And the same thing with uh, YouTube. We've been able to do that on YouTube also in the playlist. Uh, so if you have gone through that and and you see any improvement, uh, yeah, is that's what some of our team members are doing. And uh, we're trying to make life easier for you. Uh, so somebody says, no, sir, put us through. It's called my video blog, my video blog. If you go to my video blog, uh, on my on my on my blog, sunlightlagerblog.com, video blog, you will see uh, that it's well arranged and topic by topic, category by category, they are categorized. Yeah, they are in chronological order. They have been arranged perfectly. Well, okay, I see that you have. Some of you have noticed it. Some of you have noticed that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I th I hope they're helpful. Uh, okay. Yeah, many of you have seen it. Okay, some of you have not seen it. Okay. Anyway, so 
So why is it? Uh, why is it that God allows troubles and challenges anyway? So, like I was talking to, I was telling you about the, um, I was telling you about uh, a child, about the, the, the baby that is just born, newly born baby, that if that baby will not struggle against resistance, movement, pressure, that that baby will never really grow and that baby will never develop. And the muscles will just become, uh, uh, you know, we just become useless. They will just, they will not be, uh, what do you call it? Mm, uh, uh, you know, they, they will, they, she will just become, uh, you know, a, a detached child. She, will, she, will, I mean, or he will just become. It will not grow. So that's how, that's what challenges after us. So the the more challenges we have, the more muscles we build. You know, it's just like somebody who never does sport and somebody who is uh, always going to uh, atrophy. That atrophy. That's what I'm looking for. Atrophy. Yeah, yeah. The, it will be atrophy, atro, at, atroph, atrophified, or what do you call it? Atrophied, atrophied, atrophied. Yeah, the muscles will just be atrophied. If, and that's what happens to us. The muscles will wilder, it will atrophy, will take place, it will, be, it will atrophy, atro, uh, you know, if we don't, uh, not entropy, not entropy. Entropy is different, it's entropy. Entropy, entropy, atrophy, atrophy. It will atrophy, atrophy. It's, okay, so there will be no development. There will be atrophy. With the, it will atro, atrophy, the muscles will atrophy. So uh, that's the problem, that's the challenge that, uh, that people will have, we, we will also have with life. If we are in, in, you know, we are not having challenges, we are not having, you, you know, we will, it will, there will be a process of flaccid, you know, everything will just come flat, they will come down. Uh, so the same way, you know, you need challenges to grow. You need troubles to grow. You need crises to grow. You need, you need problems to grow. And it is just a process of life. If you don't have problems, you will not have muscles in life. If you don't have problems, you don't have capacities. If you don't have problems, you will not have, you, you will not have uh, the ability to do anything. You'll be weak. You'll be thin. You'll be wasted. You know, it's, there will there be no life. You, you'll be totally a waste. You'll be a waste. You'll be a waste away. You know, it will be a total atrophy. And, uh, you know, that is how life is. Some people's life, when you are praying to God that God should insulate you against problems and from problems and he should deliver you and remove you from challenges, that's what you are asking for. You are asking for atrophy. I mean, for atrophy. You are asking for atrophy. You are asking for, for a weak life. You are asking for a dead life. You are actually asking for a life of uh, weakness, a life of wastage, a life that is thin, emaciated, and totally lost. It's a lost life. So, so it's not a great thing to ask for a life without problems. It's not a great thing to ask for a life without challenges. Rather, challenges make, come to make you human. Challenges come to make you, you know, who you are supposed to become. And this is not just spiritual atrophy, uh, like Fumi is saying. It's not just spiritual atrophy. It's atrophy in every sense of the word. You know, there are people who are supposed to be grown-ups, but they are not capable of doing anything. So you are grown up, you, you are 30 years old or 40 years old or 50 years old, but you can't do anything. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. And, uh, and what does that mean? That means that you, you, are, you, are, at, you, know, you are experiencing atrophy in your life with, because you, don't, you don't know, you are not, you're not being groomed. You are not, uh, you are not matured because you have not been exposed to problems. You have not been exposed to challenges. So challenges are things that make us who we are. Challenges are things that develop us into the kind of person that we are. They, they bring us to a place of maturity. They bring us to a place of maturity. So don't, don't you ever believe anybody coming to tell you those stories that you don't need, ever need problems. Um, God will protect you from problems. 
God will not protect you from problems, I'm sorry. Or that God will deliver you from problems. God will not deliver you from problems. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As bad as that might sound, but I'm sorry. It's just like this, my book. Only God can save Nigeria. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You want God to come and down and save Nigeria? What are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing if only God can save Nigeria? What are you there for? Are you kidding me? God doesn't have anything to do. <laughs> we people don't understand God. People don't understand God. People don't understand God. God has already given you everything that you need to be able to deliver your country and build your country. You know, it is not God that saved that that built America. It is it is people who built America. It's not God that built China. It is people who built China. It's not God that built, built, built Japan. It is people who built Japan. It's not God that built Dubai. It's people who built Dubai. And when it comes to Nigeria, we want God to do it. It's not God that built Great Britain. It's people who built Great Britain. When it comes to Africa, we are calling on God to come and do it. You see? We are calling on God to come and do it. Anyway, so God will allow troubles, problems, and God will allow sorrows sometimes and uh, challenges just for you to be built into a human being, into a matured human species, you know, for you to just become normal, for you to become a human species, to become a normal human person, you know, to become a homo sapiens. God will allow challenges, just like he allowed in the life of that little baby, for the baby to grow into maturity. And we rejoice as parents. Don't you rejoice? Is it a thing of joy for you as a parent when, you're, when you have a child that was born 20 years ago, but is lying down there like a one-year-old baby. If you have a child that is, that is <laughs> if you have a child that is 20 years old and is just lying down, he cannot walk, he cannot talk, he cannot crawl, he cannot sit, and just lying down there, you will be, you will think that is the greatest tragedy that has ever hit your family. That would have been the greatest tragedy. But why? So you would rather prefer all kind of challenges. You will actually be taking him to do some physiotherapy, to, to put pressure on him, to make him walk, to make him move, to make him do things. You yourself will be paying for people to get him through challenges, through resistance, through exercise and all that. Why? Because, you know, it is, oh, that is only, that's the only way that we humans gain energy. That is the only way that we gain maturity. That is the only way that we gain the muscles to live. And we gain the power, the energy to function. So it's your, your trials and your troubles are actually the way and the means through which you gain energy and power to function. You remember what God told, uh, what God told Paul when he was asking that God should take away his problems as well. He was asking God to take away his challenges. God said no. In your weakness, I am strong. You are made strong in your weakness. That you know, you should not pray that that weakness should go, but you should you should actually enjoy in it because that is your strength. That is your strength. That's your energy. That is uh, true. What you will gain energy. My grace is sufficient for you. It is you know. Uh, let, let's read. I think that is in Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, chapter twelve. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8, it says, Concerning these things, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it, it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So it is in your trouble, in your weakness, in your attacks, in your problems, in your challenges, that the strength comes. Just like with that little baby that we're talking about, just like with the little child, the little baby gets energy when there are resistance for him ahead of him, when he needs to reach out, when he needs to do something, when he needs to struggle, when he needs to crawl, when he needs to sit down, when he needs to try to walk, when you put him through challenges and walk. That is where our strength comes to the body of that little baby, of that newborn baby. Strength and energy comes to the life of that person that way. Otherwise, there is no strength for him. He will never walk. And trophy we atrophy uh atrophy we set in atrophy we set in. So for atrophy not to set in, he needs to you know constantly have challenges, constantly have challenges and resistance that is overcoming. That is how it is with life for all of us as well. You know the amount of you know, uh, uh, challenges, crises, problems, and 
and uh, you know, you know, uh, adversities that we have, they are good for us. They help us build energy. They help us build resistance. They help us build you no know, strength. They, they, they are the things that bring strength to our lives. They bring strength, experience. They bring understanding. They bring us to a new level of maturity, growth, and everything. That is how life is. That's how life is. Just like it is with the little child. Just it is with every one of us in life. Okay, let's look at a sport person that goes to the gym. If you go to the gym and you go and pull weight, I mean weight and, you know, heavy load and things like that, they are also some form of challenges and resistance and, and problems and crises, really. So they are like those crises, like, like, like those challenges, where the more weight you pull, the stronger you become, the healthier you become, and the more capable you are to undo more challenges, more, more weight. I mean, so someone who has been going to, uh, to the gym for the past 20 years of his life and who can carry 200 kilograms or 300 kilograms, for him, it will not be a challenge to carry a kilo, a five, a fifty kilogram you no know, bag or you know a load or a hundred kilogram you know challenge because he's been used to it. But for me, it will be a problem. It will be a problem. But why? Because I've not been doing that all my life. So the same thing with with life. You know, the more challenges you have, the more problems and troubles and challenges and crises that you are you learn to overcome. It gives it brings more strength to your life. That is what makes you, just like the guy who goes to the gym has more strength than the other guys who don't, that is how life is. So when you face more challenges, you have more strength, you have more experience, you have more wisdom, you have more knowledge. It's just like, you know, have you noticed that people, sportsmen, people who are sportsmen, they are normally more disciplined and more focused and more, you know, focus oriented and more goal oriented than most other people in their countries. They have more results. They are more celebrated. Why? Because they have lived a life of discipline most of the time. So that life of discipline has helped them to become, to become better than the average citizen of their country. Or just look at uh, people in the military. If you look in most countries, people in the military, you know, they are normally much more you know, they are regarded as people who have more strength. They are regarded as people who have more discipline. I mean, who have more focus, who have more energy than other people. They, they look healthy. They look, you know, more in the average, more than other people. Why? Why? Because they have been through training most of the time. Most of their life is about training, unlike regular people. So that is how life is. So, so challenges, they are the ones who make you into who you are. They are the ones who provide you the energy to live life. Life. Challenges are the things that provide you with, uh, with, with, the, with the fuel, with the energy that you need. So that is one thing. That is one lesson that God was trying to teach uh, Paul. God was trying to teach Paul that lesson. So when, because Paul was just like any one of us, he was asking God to remove his problems. He was asking God to remove his challenges. And God said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to remove your problems. I'm not going to remove your challenges. He said, because if I remove those challenges, then I remove my strength from you. If I remove those problems, then my strength will not be there for you. But when you are combating with those problems, when you are combating with those challenges, while you are fighting those challenges and those troubles, I will be supplied. That is how you gain. You get an entrance, uh, an inroad to my strength. That is how you get gain my strength coming to your life. Just like when you gain strength, you know, and energy when you when you pump up and you do gym, that is how, you know, you go to the gym, that is how energy comes to you, that is how life is as well. The more challenges that you are battling with, that you are overcoming, the more power, powerful you become, the more experienced you become, the more wiser you become, the more strength comes to your life. And that's what God says here. By, by grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So you must have some challenges, some weaknesses, some attacks. When you are going through that, that is how my strength, the strength of God comes to be perfected in your life. So I said, when, when Paul, Paul is a quick learner. When Paul got to know that, 
He said, wow, okay, I would rather boast in my weaknesses now. Okay, no, no, no. Let me now begin to boast in my weaknesses, in my attacks, in my uh, troubles, in my uh, adversaries, in my problems. I would rather begin to use them. I would rather ask for more problems right now. I would rather ask for more problems, more sorrows, more adversities. Why? Because I want to get more energy. I want to get more power from God. I want to get more, 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 more strength from God. So he said, therefore... He says, most, <laughs> I would rather boast in my infirmities now that the power of Christ may rest in me. So he, he got the deal. He got the lesson. You know, he said, he knows that the key for more power of God to come is for him to get, to, to go through more, uh, <laughs> to go through more challenges, for him to face and confront more problems, more attacks, more weaknesses and more repro and he says therefore i take pleasure in infirmities so he started taking pleasure in infirmities that he was trying to run away from now he started embracing those infirmities then in reproaches reproaches are what other people do against you and he started taking more pleasure he started taking pleasure in his reproaches it's before he hated the reproaches before he hated the attacks before he hated the 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 challenges the sorrow the problems but now he said i'm going to be rejoicing in this uh, reproaches now because i know to when people attack me when I'm, you're undergoing my problem and challenge the, the grace of god comes the strength of god comes and I will rather take pleasure in my needs, in my persecutions, in my distresses, so that for Christ's sake, so that for when I am weak, I know I am strong. You see, that is how life is. When it is, you are converting energy, when you are going through struggles, when you are going through crisis, you are converting one energy from one, you are converting energy from one form to the other. From, from from one form to the other. So those challenges you are going through is a form of converting energy from outside, from other, you know, from the environment into your system. You are building in energy and strength into your system. And that's how it works with, 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 with the power of God as well. And it says that my my grace, my power is enough for you, especially when you are going through trouble. So when you are not going through trouble, then there are no power. No being converted. There are no energy being converted into you. There are no energy being converted into you. So, uh, all right. Okay. Let's continue. Now, so our troubles are what God uses to build us up and to make us who we are. Our troubles and challenges are what God uses to build us up and to make us who we are. If God has a plan for your life, he must take you through a process of formation. He must take you through a process of formation. You've got to be formed. You've got to be developed into that particular individual that you are supposed to be. You see, God has a plan for each and every one of us. And there is no way we are going to become that person that God wants us to become without going through our own processes. Each and every person must go through his own challenge. He must go through his own troubles, his own crisis, so that he will be molded. You so through, uh, through challenges and through adversities and crises and problems, we are molded into who we are meant to become. We are molded into who we are supposed to become. So if you are supposed to become uh, a, a, a Jack, a, if you are supposed to become uh, a Joseph, you, you have to go through uh, a love relationship from your father that becomes a hate relationship from your siblings. If you are, if you are a Joseph, you have to be hated by your brothers. If you are a Joseph, you have to be betrayed by your brothers. If you are going to be a Joseph, wait for betrayal. If you are going to become a Joseph, wait for, 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 for hatred from the closest of people to you. If you are going to become a Joseph, wait for some kind of bondage, you know, that you are going to be sold out into bondage. If you are going to become a, uh, a, a Joseph, there is no way you become that Joseph without some kind of incarceration, without some kind of prison experience. 
So if you are going to become a Joseph, wait for your own prison experience. If you are going to become a Joseph, wait for lies and fabrications and, and, and uh, false accusations against you. You are not going to become a Joseph without those processes. If you are going to become a Joseph, so what I'm saying is that whatever the target is, whatever the goal is of who you are supposed to become, there will be mm, corresponding mm, challenges that are geared towards you, that are directed towards you because of the destiny that is waiting for you. You know, if not because of the destiny that you have waiting for you, then you might not need to pass through some challenges. But if you have a particular challenge, you know, destiny waiting ahead for you, then, you know, that's just the way. And when God gives us, a, you know, the illustration of the men of God in the Bible, like uh, Joseph and others, that is telling us that if I want to see, all of us want to become Moses, I mean Joseph. Oh, I will become a Joseph in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm the Joseph of my generation. Well, if you are going to be a Joseph, what are the paths you have passed through? What are the challenges you have overcome? What are the troubles you have over, you know, you have you have been taken through? That is your preparation stage. That is your molding stage. That is how God molds you. That is how God packages you. So for you to really become who you are supposed to become, there are processes that you can you cannot jump over. You will not be able to jump over some of the some, some of the uh, some of the you know, some of the processes that you must go through. So if you are going to become a Joseph, like I said, you know, get ready for a prison experience. Get ready for some inca incarceration experiences. Uh, get ready for betrayal. Get ready for lies against you. Get ready for fabrications against you. Get ready for false accusations. Get ready for lies. Get ready for, uh, you know, uh, you know, get ready for any kind of, you know, evil that happened to Joseph. That's why we have the example of Joseph in the Bible. Before you get to that throne, because most of the time we only see the throne. We just want to go through. We just want to get the prophecy and, and end up in the throne, right? And on the throne, right there. But it doesn't work like that. You've got to go through the process of formation. There must be a metamorphosis, a metamorphosis from where you are right now, uh, a metamorphosis of who you are right now to be able to become who you need to be. You know, when we look at ourselves, everyone, we think that we're okay. When I look at myself, I think I'm okay. When you look at yourself, you think you are okay. But in, re in the real sense, compared to where you are coming, uh, you, where you are going to, when God sees that, no, but you are supposed to be a Joseph. Yes, your name might be Joseph, but for you to really become that Joseph that would take, you know, the, uh, the land of Egypt by storm, for you... <laughs> For you to be able to become a Joseph that will be able to interpret the dreams, for you to become well, the Joseph that will be able to, you know, take the throne and in, in Egypt, you, in a foreign land, you must have gone through the same process that the original Moses, well, I mean, uh, Joseph went through. You must have gone through the same betrayal. You must have gone through the same pain. You must have survived the same pain. So that metamorphosis must have taken place in you, just like with Moses, I mean, with Joseph. So, you know, you think you are are okay but you are not it is the process that will make you and will mold you and will form you into the new person that is capable of fulfilling the mission and the assignment that god has for you so do, stop hating people for 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 despising you for being responsible for your problems for for you know putting you down and for you know you know doing all kind of evil to you they are only preparing you they are only getting you ready for your throne they are only getting you ready for your for for your destiny. So, do you still want to become a, a, a Joseph? Are you sure you still want to become a Joseph? Well, if you still want to become a Joseph, then take the, the, the challenges, the troubles, the crisis, the sorrow in their strides. Take them as they come and make sure you overcome them and you have the right attitude to be able to turn them into your, into your strength and into your energy. All right. Do you want to become a Moses? Do you see yourself becoming a Moses? Do you want to become a Moses? You want to become a Moses? Well, you are going to you are going to <laughs> you are going to have a lot of trouble with the people you are living among. You are going to become like among your people, but you are going to become the strange one out. You are going to become the strange one out. Have you been experiencing that kind of lack of understanding that people don't understand you? Your friends don't understand you. People around you don't understand you. Well, you know Moses had to go through all that. And more than that, he had to go through the social 
uh, polarization, when you know the, so, the society is totally divided and he is caught in the middle of the division of the society. So maybe you are actually in that kind of situation when you are caught in the middle of you know the people you want to you know you know what what happened to, to Moses? He wanted to help the children of Israel, and those same children of Israel that he wanted to help are the ones who went to report him that he killed a, a, he killed a, a, an Egyptian. And you know, and they went to they, they they betrayed him. They sold him out, and they became a fugitive. So, have you become a fugitive yet? Have you become a fugitive yet? Are you a fugitive yet? Have you been? Have you had to run for your life yet? Have you have to be gone into hiding yet? So, if you want to become a Moses, if you want to become a deliverer, what have you gone through? What have you gone through? Have you gone through the the experience of you know being declared wanted? Have you gone through, you know, a death penalty on your head? Hmm? When was the last time you went through that? When was the last time the government of the land was running after you? When was the last time the, 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 there was a decree? There is a decree to destroy your life. Uh, have, you been, have you been under a threat of destruction from your birth? From the very time you were, you were, you were giving birth to? Uh, do you have to, are you, have you needed to, have, to hide yourself? To hide yourself from 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 the from the from the assassins of the gov of, of the land, and have you have you gone to a strange land to become a servant there and to be to, to take care of other man's sheep, other man's cattle for forty years, huh? <laughs> or for at least for two years, or at least for four years, yeah? How, how much have you done of that? How much have you done of that? How much have you done of that? So 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 for you to become a Moses, uh, have you confronted Pharaoh? How many pharaohs have you confronted? How many plagues have you brought down? Huh? How many encounters with the, with the Lord have you had on the mountain? How many encounters have you had with the Lord in the wilderness? Huh? Have you removed your shoes? Have you removed your shoes? Have you removed your sandals? Have you, have you given up everything? Have you told him, have you come to the end of yourself? Have you come to the end of yourselves and said, you know, I'm no more the owner of this land? I'm no more in charge. I'm no more in control. I'm no more the owner of this sandal. I give you everything. Even this sandal, take it all. Have you seen so this, the awesomeness of God to the extent that you, you just say, you know, you know, I'm overwhelmed. I need help. <laughs> I need a heron. You know, so, so, so when you say, you know, you want to become something, it is, <laughs> it is, uh, it is, it is easy for you to just say you want to become this and that. All of us say that. We want to become this, we want to become that. But you don't want to go through the process. We don't seem to want to go to, through the process that other people go through. If you really want to become who God wants you to become, you've got to go through some processes. You've got to go. So people who tell you that you will never have crisis, or you will never have challenges, or you will never have trouble, you know, they are deceiving you really. Let me tell you the truth. They are deceiving you. They are not telling you the truth. Or you want to, you have, do you see yourself as the Paul of your generation? Are you the Paul of this generation? Are you the Paul of this age? <laughs> how many times have you been thrown from the, from the hill? Have, how many times have you felt that you've been just, you have a free fall, free fall, free fall? How many times have you been put in prison like Paul? How many times have you been whipped and beaten? How many times? How many times have that happened to you? How many times have the brethren rejected you and ran away from you and humiliated you? How many times? How many times? How many of that have you gone through? How many rejections have you been through? So if you want to become a Paul, you, <laughs> do you know what made Paul famous are his letters. What made Paul famous are his, are his letters, his epistles. Well, you tell me where he wrote those epistles. <laughs> well, 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 do you still want to become a Paul? Or do you still want to become a Moses? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure you still want to become a Joseph? <laughs> or maybe you want to become a David. Is it David that you would like to be? <laughs> Is it David that you want to become? Is it David that you want to become? Okay, let me tell you about David. <laughs> let me tell you about David now. Let me tell you about David. Let me tell you about David. <laughs> you know, you know, David was in the house of his father. And he was he was left to do all the all the dirty jobs, you say. He was left to do all the dirty jobs. 
You know, nobody will go to clean down to care, take care of the sheep. Nobody will go to the field. Nobody will like to go and do anything. He has to go and do everything for them. And then when it's time for glory, you are you are you are avoided, and they pass by him. Have they been passing by you? How many times have you been neglected? When it's time for reward, when it's time for profit, when it's time for for being honored, and then that's when they forget about you. And when it's time to be to be presented, to be presented before 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 the prophet and before the before the servant of the Lord. That is when they forget that you are even one of the fam one of the family members. Okay, have you gone through that a lot? Have you gone through that a lot? Well, I've blessed. What about what about you being alone in the field with your bears, the bears of this world? How many of them have you encountered? <laughs> oh, have you been in? Have you been in touch with uh, some uh, lions of late? What lion have you been in touch with of late? What lion have you been in touch with of late? How, which, how did the fight end? You know, there are some, it doesn't have to be physical lion and deer, but, you know, some situations are worse than physical deer or physical lion, all right? So have you been in such situations when you confront situations that just look as if you are fighting bare-handed, bare, uh, bare um, you know, with bears and lions of this world? And uh, have, you been, have, you been, have you confronted any Goliath yet? Have you met any Goliath of the leg? Maybe what you are calling Goliath is even just a beer. <laughs> so, so have you, and maybe you want to become the, the, the something of your age. Well, you know, you go, go through what something goes through, went through first. <laughs> or maybe you like to become a famous and a rich like Job. You want, to become, you want to become the Job of your generation? Well, 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 well. So, so where did we get that concept from? That if you are a Christian, that you are not supposed that you are not you are supposed to be protected from challenges and problems. Where do we get that from? Where do we get that from? You know, no, it is rather a part of life. I mean, the, actually, you know, there are so many scriptures. I have so many scriptures here. You can't believe it. I have so many scriptures here. You can't believe it. So your troubles are to make you, your troubles are to make, they are, they are there to make you into, to form you, to mold you into whom you are supposed to become. So there is just no, it doesn't matter if you are a believer or you are not a believer. It doesn't matter if you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. You know, you are going to be molded by your problems and by your troubles. And they are just not going around it. They are just not going around it. So, um, my God, time, 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 time. Uh, there's just no way God is going to leave you the way you are. If he leaves you the way you are, then you become nothing. You become nothing. You just become a waste. You become like that uh, 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 atrophied, uh, atrophied child that just you just be atrophy will just co coming and just just useless. Just be a waste. You'll be useless. You'll be a waste. Uh, so God will always use adversity to bring to pass our in our His purpose and His and His uh, His intention in our lives. God will always use uh, adversities and problems and challenges to mold us into the kind of individuals and people that we are supposed to become. You know, God knows our destiny. He knows our calling. He knows our um, yeah. He knows the 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 people we are called to become, and He knows what exactly will help you to become that person. And so he allows you to go through your own process. So the most important thing is that while you are going through those processes, you know, be, you know, trust in God, trust in God, believe in God, hold on to God, and um, yeah, hold on to God, focus on God, you know, and let these things work out for good. Instead of cursing God, instead of blaming people, instead of blaming God, instead of blaming your family, your people, your husband, your wife, your children, instead of blaming people, just forget about it. Just uh, just you know, just just you know, just trust God that God sees everything, and that God God will see you through, and that God will use everything you are going through for the better and for your good and for your advantage. So just believe God to turn your negative th your negative experiences into into positive ones, and uh, believe God to you know to use everything for good for you, rather than you know crying and weeping and hating people. So God is using all those things to mold you into who you are supposed to become. Your adversities have not come to kill you. 
Your problems and your crises have not come to destroy you. They have come to mold you. Your crises have not come to destroy you. They have come to mold you. They have come to mold you. So somebody is asking, what are the steps to get out of crisis? I will go through them with you. You know, I'm going to talk to this, I'm talk about this every for a whole week, every day, morning and afternoon. So I'm taking it at one one topic at a time, but it's going to be all about crisis and advice adversities uh, on you know every day. You know, so you just keep on following uh, this series. It's going to be a whole series, and you need to listen to all the series. So God will use adversities to change your worldview. God will use your troubles and your crisis to change your, your mindset. God will use your uh, crisis and adversity to mold you into the kind of person you, you need to become. He will use that to, you know, to balance you, to balance your worldview, and to, you know, to make you become, you know, to see the world the way God wants you to see, rather than the way you see the world. God will use your troubles to, uh, to, sh to shape your worldview, your paradigm your mindset and to change your attitude to people and to your attitude to God and it will it will it will it will change it will it will remove you into the kind of person that you are supposed to be you are supposed to be so tonight I'm going to preach on how should I respond rightly how to respond rightly to crisis how to rightly respond to crisis adversity and troubles so I'm going to be dealing with our response in the evening tonight okay so how to rightly respond to how to respond rightly to crisis, tribulations, yeah, and troubles. How to rightly respond is what I'll be dealing with tonight. But before then, if you have not yet, if you are, if you have not yet got a, gotten a copy of this message, if you have not yet gotten a copy of this message, it's, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. Just go and press your uh, link button. There must be a not a link button, but a share button under your video there. Somewhere there on your timeline, you have a share button. Go share the button. Press the share button. Once you press the share button, you get a copy of this message. So that's the way to get a copy of this message. So press the share button. Somewhere there, there must be a share button under this video somewhere there. When you press share, you get a copy. Because I think you might need to listen to this message once again. Maybe over and over again. Maybe you might need to listen to it for as many times as possible. You might need, and if you have missed many of my other messages, go to sundayadilajablog.com and in there you will see some the, the thing that is called video blog. Video blog. If you go to the video blog, that's uh, that's what you need. Go to the video blog there, and uh, yes, and you'll be able to see the whole list of messages that you have missed. All right. Okay, Joyce Arrow says we want to be great without going through pain. No pain, no gain. Fumi Adewusi said, Thank you, Pastor Sunday, for this amazing message. It has strengthened me and preparing me for my promotion. Wonderful. Jeff Seeger said, I used to be in gang. Then I realized I can't stay in that gangster paradise. I might end up dead in jail for life or overdose from drugs. Wow. Marianne says, I have regained so much strength out of this teaching. Thank God. Glory says, yes, no pain, no gain. Daniel said, this teaching has turned me into a solid rock because I know I am unique, special, and peculiar. I'm a masterpiece. Mary Muguru said, now I got it. I'm going to rejoice in my troubles. It's for my own good. Right. <laughs> you got it. Thompson Abigail says, Pastor, it's like you are seeing through me. <laughs> Holy Spirit is surely seeing through you. I tell you that. Rochelle White says, wow, it's all truth in the Bible. Yes. Oluwa Yebisi Johnson said, David is the only one mentioned in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. This is because David will always go back to God for mercy. Wow. Afolabi Victor said, Joseph spent 10 years, right? 
in prison. He was captured at the age of 17 and spent three years in Potiphar's house. Kunle Awe says, your troubles are to mold you. There are, there are no shortcuts, right? Jeff Seeger says, women are my only weakness, like Samson, but I'm not strong like him. You can be, you can be. Maybe God is trying to make you strong like him. I'm sure that's why you are on this platform too. Yetunde says, situations, trials, and crises. Wow. Dr. Adelaja, I'm pressing on the mark of her high calling. Thank you so much. Princess Gildov says, Pastor, please don't look at the time. Oh. <laughs> Mabel says, wow. Some pastors say if you have any problems or troubles, they, then they, it means there is no God with you. That they are no, that therefore you are not with God. I'm not sure of that. Gladys says, my supernatural pastor. This is a great revelation, sir. Thank you. Victoria also is saying, please don't look at the time, sir. <laughs> Davida Yemi said, in, in fact, everyone... Every everyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. Second Timothy three twelve, right? Fumi says, Pastor Sunday, I love you like kilo day, kilo day. That means what? What does that mean, man? Will you explain that to me? I love you like, like what? I know you love me, but kilo de means like what? What does that mean? Samuel Sammy said, don't think God will leave you just the way you are. If he does, then you will come to waste. You, you become nothing. That's so true. Bimbo Roberts, well, I will now check out all of your messages. I think they would definitely mold me for good. Pastor, you do say the truth. <laughs> Thank you. The troubles at the exams, if we solve the problem and pass, we get promoted. Yeah. Glory said, if you want to be great in life, you have to pass many lessons of life in order to be strong for future ahead. Only the grace of only by the grace of God. Samuel uh, says, "Just trust God while you are going through those processes." Yet today says, "Some people only run to God when they have troubles. Why some run away completely to little to little little gods?" Kunle says, "God will always use our adversity to bring us to the throne." Don't engage in game, in game blaming. Trust God to turn your negative to positive, right? Daniel says, some of us allow our friends and society to tell us who we are. I know by redemption that what kill others will not kill me. Joseph says, uh, Joyce, error. Joyce, there is no way God will leave you the way you are. If he does, you will become nothing. Mary says, no story, no training, no glory. Right. Ralph and uh, Geraldine Rod Rodriguez mold us our character. Jeff Seeger, thank you, Pastor. Everything you preach is very true. T.Y. Moore, yes, live on God and trust God and release people from blame, accusations, or malice. Awesome. Love this teaching. Fumi says, I'm shouting and dancing for hearing this message. Thank you for clarity. Kunle say, wow, thank, thank God. God bless you, Pastor Sunday. 
Omotayo says, much appreciation, sir. More of God's grace. Blessings. Flair says, we all want to become somehow the next Pastor Sunday. We don't know all your challenges. Oh, Pastor, we will do our best. Noel says, want to be T.Y. Okay, that's probably not me. Tiger says, this is just mind-blowing. Afolabi says, no God, no glory. Bidemi Razak, God created children of perdition to put us on the right track. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore. Daniel Oshoma said, those who, those the, the Lord... Uh, uh, those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Marianne said, Thank you, Pastor, for sharing my whole life story. I'm so strengthened and encouraged to stand more. Bosses says, from God's perspective, our troubles and challenges are divine opportunities. Gladys say, shared always, sir. We need this message in our life. So if you have not shared it, please go ahead and share like Gladys. Grace Olajumoka said, let your challenges bring something good out of you. Yetunde says, our life is a daily continuous modern process. Therefore, tri trials and tribulations are what makes us better. They are our upgrades. Princess says, Pastor, well spoken. My one and only greatest, awesome, best, amazing, honest teacher. Kisses. Thank you. Daniel says, at redemption, we are greater than all the Old Testament saints. So the challenges will not kill us, but it's a platform for God to manifest. Fumilayo Agape, thank you, sir. You are never a boring preacher, teacher to listen to. May God continue to sustain you in Jesus' name. T.Y., I really love and appreciate this meditation. Like always, you bring us fresh manna every day. Love your heart. Fumi says, Adewusi, I will listen to it trillion times and share it trillion times as well. <laughs> thank you. But, you know, it's going to be every day. I'm going to come back with another one tonight, then tomorrow, every day for the next one week. Paul Oria, this is awesome website. I've seen it, uh, even the YouTube. That is sundayadilajablog.com. Uh, thank you so much. Fum Fumi Jeboda said, powerful message. Thanks, sir, for getting us ready for the big transformation God has in store for us. Olayinka Olushe, he said, in every adversity, there are more than one seed of benefit. Thank you, sir. Christina Lampe, now I understand, and it is clear to me. Anastasia says, I have much, much better understanding now regarding adversity, challenges, trouble, and problems. Obina, but even if you should suffer for righteousness, say you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Daniel says, Pastor Sunday is a new generation seer. Seer, okay. Lolo Amaka, I'm so blessed and encouraged by this great message. Yet today, this message needs to be watched over and over again by all. Please share and inbox every living soul. Christina, Pastor, you have explained it in a way that even a child will understand it. Thank you, Pastor. Lado says, I regain the key to my victory right now. Isaac Odejimi, this is the original prosperity message, though I joined late, but greatly blessed by it. Pearl David, Pastor, thank you, sir. You are a blessing to me. You keep me company in my night shifts. <laughs> Kiru said, this is strong deliverance. <laughs> deliverance section. Deliverance sessions. <laughs> Dorothy Tyler, Pastor, people always ask me if God do exist, why all the sorrow and sickness? I'm always, I was always speechless, Pastor, but now I know what to say. Prudence, thanks, Pastor, is understood. You are simply the best. Bless you abundantly, my mentor. I, I'm blessed, I'm increased.
they are in style. Thank you very much, sir. A word is enough for the wise. Gift Amos. God bless you, doctor. I now know better. My problem is my stepping stone to success of my calling. Thank you, my mentor. T.Y. say, wow, what is this? What a wonder. Uh, Fumi say, like the love is too much. Oh, okay, that's what she meant. Like, <laughs> love you too much, right? Thank you. Okay. Adiokwa Oluwada Milare say, God bless you, man of God. This has changed. This has challenged me. Davida, there are troubles that come upon the good because they are doing good and going against popular opinion and culture. Yet today, if you would like to join me to advertise Dr. Sunday Delaja live broadcast on your timeline, please inbox me immediately. That's good. Oluwa Yemi C. Johnson, Joseph was persecuted, but even why do, going through this persecution, he still feared God and said, why would I sin against God? Fumi said, he says, saying, I love you, Kilode, do you want to love me uh, die? Uh, okay, that's explaining what she meant. Olukayo, they say, Pastor Sunday is a teacher extraordinary. It tells it as it is. Thanks for the truth you share. Another eye opener. Noel says, My trouble, I'm, I'm, I am who I am as a result of my trouble. This message has simplified that. Joseph Oyewale, in the days where men's hearts are falling, we need teachings like this to put us in proper perspective of what life is all about. Boluji day to be great, we must be greatly tried and molded in the furnace of adversity. Wow. Oluwa to be show Sonya. Faithful is he that has called you. He will surely do what he says he will do. Thank you, Pastor. Glory say God bless you mightily, Pastor, for feeding my spirit. Flair carrying big challenges, big destiny. Lord, don't put them away from me. I want to grow fast, very fast. The message leads and helps me to do that. David, Paul said, if you are going to suffer, let it be for good, something good. Don't let your suffering come out of evil. This is self-affliction then. Mary says, there are gains in pain. No pains, no story, no story, no gain, no glory. Pastor Kemi on Adipe, you are doing a great job, sir. Your platform has motivated me to start reaching out in the area of marriage for 30 minutes once a week. Brilliant, brilliant. Robert, to help us reinforce our belief in him. You help us reinforce our belief in God. Sister, we always look at the glory but forget the price to pay. Uh, Patricia, Pat uh, challenges bring us closer to God. Pat Admons, thanks again for another wow message. Bless you, sir. Adiola, these two challenges build us in wisdom, strength, confidence for us for great accomplishments. Yep. Tiger Diepre, my brethren, can't it all joy when you fall into diverse situations? Yep. Obina, running for trouble from trouble will not make one strong in life. Face the trouble will turn it to glory because all things work together for good. Right. Adiola is on great and powerful message. Well delivered. Times passes. Dr. Adelaja, you are awesome. No one but you. <laughs> she Sandra, this message has blessed me tremendously. Thank you, great teacher. Pearl David, Pastor. No, please don't stop this week. The world and us believers need more of this. Okay. Unke Iruka. Pastor, thank you for this encouraging message. John Cena Biodon, God cannot promote you if you don't face persecution. Persecutions are like test exams. You need to go through to be promoted.
<laughs> Princess said, I just reminded Pastor that the time is only 8.45 <laughs> plus zero, zero. Pastor, please don't stop yet. Oh, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you tonight, everyone. God bless. Bye.